So uh, program rules is one of the most important concepts in creating tracker programs. So it's a kind of interesting, but a little different from what we have already learned. So, but if you grab the concept clearly, then uh, it would be easy to use this facility in your programs. So we'll be seeing today how to, uh, what is the program rules concept and uh, what are the steps to con consider when creating a program rule and then how to create program rules using variables, expressions, and actions. So three components, variables, expressions, and actions in DHS2. So I'll try to go slow so that everyone is on the page, same page and can grab the concepts easily. So program rules, they provide a dynamic behavior in user input apps, that is the tracker capture and the event capture apps. So these, uh, when you create program rules in your program, once, you, once a person enters data using a tracker capture, then he or she can see this dynamic behavior depending on the person's activity, that is what he does in the user interface. So do you, well, the activity happens when you are entering data or when the interface of the data entry changes. So during data entry, the program rule expressions are evaluated. So each time somebody enters data, changes the value in, a, in the related data element or attribute, the program rule is validated and then the action is executed. So we'll see few examples of these program rules so that you can understand what these program rules actually does. So I'll go to the demo instance. So this is the demo instance. I will show a few program rules already customized in this instance so that uh, you can see what these program rules actually do. So as I mentioned, these activities happen in the data entry user interfaces, that is tracker capture and event capture. So I'm going to go to tracker capture because we are working with tracker instances. And uh, I'll start with the TB program, which is customized in our instance. So the treat TB treatment card app. So we already have few people registered in the program, but I will start registering a new person so that I can show you a few program rules in action. So I go to click register. And this is the page you get to register a new person into the TB treatment card program. So I'll type the name first. Say Chris. So we'll put the uh, sex. Then you can see here the date of birth and age. Both fields are in the data uh, enrollment page. So uh, just see what happens when I enter the date of birth of this person. I will say I was born in 1972, February, is it March, March 8th. Now you can see the age field is already filled. It's already calculated. So this happened because of a program rule running behind. So when I change the value of the date of birth, it automatically calculated the age and displayed in the attribute age. So that is one example of using a program rule in this program. So I will save this person and go to the dashboard and see what other program rules are in action in this 
TB control program. I'll click save and continue. Now I moving on to the dashboard of this uh, person. So uh, you can see the first stage, initial diagnosis stage is already open and you can see some data elements without any data values. And if you see on the top bar, you can see the TB registration number, the first name, last name, sex, and the patient's age. So on the uh, initial diagnosis stage, the first section there, I'm going to fill this patient's information. So patient's TB, patient's type, I'll put this as a new patient. Then the system is asking for the site of disease. So tuberculosis can be pulmonary or extra pulmonary. So that means it could be in the lungs or outside the lungs. So if I select pulmonary, so this patient has pulmonary TB, tuberculosis in the lung, so I'm selecting pulmonary. Now, if I go to the uh, top bar, now you can see another label, another text field is appearing here, the TB disease site equals pulmonary. So this was not present when we enrolled the patient, but when we entered the patient's disease site, this appeared. So it's a dynamic behavior which was triggered by the change of the value of this data element. So let's change this to extra pulmonary now. I'm changing the TB disease site to extra pulmonary. Now you can see two changes. I hope you have noticed that an additional data element for the EPTB site that is extra pulmonary TB site appeared below the TB disease site data element. And also the text on the top bar also changed. Now the TB disease site is extra pulmonary. So it automatically changed. So I'm going to select uh, the patient's EPTB site. So now the patient is not having TB in his lungs, but having TB somewhere else. Let's say joints and bones. So now patient's TB site is extra pulmonary and it's in the joints and bones. Let's now let's say I made a mistake by putting it extra pulmonary, but I'm going to change it. I have to change it back to pulmonary. Let's see what will happen. I'm changing this to pulmonary now. And there's a message popping up. EPTB site was blanked out and hidden by your last action. So when I click OK, the EPTB site was hidden again. So it was there was a value, now it's blanked out and now it's back to pulmonary. So this is one common example where you use program rules as a skip logic in your data entry interfaces. So now you have seen three instances where program rules have been used. Let's see another instance in the same program. So if I go further down, I can see there's a field data element for weight, enter in the patient's weight. And it says the label is weight in kilograms. So let's enter some weight and see. Let's say this patient is 75 kilos. So it accepted the weight and nothing happens. It just turned green. So let's say by mistake, somebody forgot the seven and it entered five. Now there's a message popping up. It's kind of a warning message saying this weight value is likely out of range. So weight of this patient, we have said it's five kilograms and the system is displaying a message saying that it's likely out of range. 
So now we have to correct our weight. Let's put something in the other extreme. Let's say 150. Still, the message is there because we have defined a likely range for the weight. So in this program rule, we have defined weight to be more than five kilos and less than 140 kilos. So that is defined by the person who customizes the system. So that's not a hard and fast rule. You can design, decide whatever range you want and give a warning that this could be out of the range. So let's say 139 now. Now you can see the warning message goes out because now the weight I have entered is within the range. So this action is showing a warning is also done using a program rule. Right. So uh, now in this program, TB program, I showed you four instances where a program rule has been used. One, in calculating the age from the date of birth, two, displaying a value from the data element on the top bar, three, hiding a field depending on the value of the TB patient's disease site for giving a warning message depending on the weight value entered. Right. Let's go back to, the, to another program, the antenatal care program and see what type of program rules are available there for us to see. So again, I'm going to register a mother into the antenatal care program. So this is the enrollment registration page. You can see NC registration, the last menstrual period, insurance number, first name. So uh, I will put some data here. First name, uh, let's say, Last name, Williams. Now, again, I have the field to enter date of birth. So I will enter, let's say, uh, this 2007, 2007, March 2nd. So automatically, again, the age calculated and it's 14 because the lady, the mother was born on 2007. And it also displays that it is a high risk pregnancy because the age is less than 16 years. So this, act, this change of value in the attribute triggered two actions. One is displaying the age after calculation and two, giving an error message. So uh, we'll ignore the error and uh, go, to the, go to register this patient. So I'm going to save and continue. So now you can see the dashboard, identity dashboard of the mother enrolled into the antenatal care program. So on the enrollment widget, I have the ANC registration date and the last menstrual period date, which I didn't change initially. Now I'm going to change this into, let's say, uh, 2021, December 30th. So her last menstrual period was on December 12th and she was enrolled into the program today. So now, if you can see, if you can go through the dashboard, you have the enrollment widget, then uh, track entity, uh, tabul uh, tabular data entry phase, which has ANC registration, which we still didn't 
create any events, then on the left, on the right side, you have the feedback widget, which is no feedback exists. Then the profile widget and few other widgets. Now I'm going to add her first ANC visit. So she's coming to the clinic today. So I've added her first ANC visit as today. And automatically you can see a change in the interface on the feedback widget. So on the feedback widget, her gestational age is automatically calculated. So it's at the first ANC visit, her gestational age is four weeks. So this one we didn't enter, but we entered the last menstrual period and we created the first visit for today and the system automatically calculated the gestational age using a program rule. So that is one example of another program rule. So in the pregnancy tab, pregnancy history of the ANC registration. So I'm going to uh, fill some details here. There's pregnancy history. You put the gravidity. I think uh, and this was explained earlier, but if anybody missed it, the gravidity means the number of times that that uh, woman was pregnant. That day. In the even in the from the history and including the current pregnancy, the number of times that the woman has been pregnant. So let's say this woman had a previous pregnancy also, and now this is a second pregnancy. Let's put two here, and now automatically you can see another field appeared for parity. So parity is defined as the number of times she has given birth to a fetus or baby uh, with a gestational age over 24 weeks, 24 weeks or more. So the fetus, if it survived over 24 weeks or more and she gave birth, whether the, it was a stillbirth or a live birth, the number is calculated. So this lady had one previous pregnancy and current, pre current pregnancy. So parity we can enter because she already had a past pregnancy. So if she, if her past pregnancy outcome was a live fetus or a uh, delivery after 24 weeks, her parity is one. But if this is her first pregnancy, her parity should be zero because she has not delivered any children before. So let's change to gravity into one. And automatically you see a message, parity was blanked out and hidden by your last action. And you cannot see the field to enter parity. So that is also done using a program rule. So uh, in this program, the antenatal program, now we have seen three program rules, one for calculating the age and displaying a warning if it's a high risk pregnancy less than 16 years. And uh, the second one to calculate the gestational age and display in the feedback widget. Third one is to hide the field for data entry field for parity depending on the value of gravity. Right. So now you have seen how the seen the use of these program rules. So let's see how we how to create these program rules. So uh, where should where can I create these uh, program rules? So when creating the metadata, you usually go to maintenance app. And if you go to the maintenance app, uh, you can see under program, program rule and program variable, two components are there. So for cre to create these programs, I will uh, log in to the customized 
customizing app for customizing instance. Look out of this uh, demo instance. And uh, customization instance. Back to maintenance app. Then uh, program tab. So under those, you can see program rules and program variables. So you can see already a uh, few of you have uh, started creating program rules and program variables. So let's uh, see how to create these components in a program rule. Right. So I'm going back to my uh, presentation. So program rules. So most of most types of action will take effect immediately when the user enters values in the tracker capture and capture. So once the user enters a value or changes a value in a data element or an attribute, the uh, program rule action will be initiated. So when creating rules, program rules, you have to think of these three components. So you have to think, create, uh, customize these three components, configure these three components when creating a program rule. One is the variable, then the expression, and third one is the action. So we'll start with variables. So what is a program rule variable? The program rule variable, it represents the attribute and data, an attribute or data element value which will be evaluated as a part of expression. So in the system, we enter attribute values and data element values. But when you are creating program rules, you have to get these attribute or data element values into a variable, which is kind of an intermediate vehicle to when you are creating a program rule. So when you change the attribute or the data element value, the change occurs also in the variable which you create. And then this variable is evaluated to trigger the action. So the variables are kind of a pointer. It points to the attribute or to the data element which should be evaluated. So these variables, they create a uniform way to include these data values and attributes. Because if you can't just point to a data element because it has other dimensions also. One data element, the value can change depending on the stage of the program. So that's why there is an intermediate variable so that program rules can check these variables. So it won't have this any conflicts. It will have, a, have the proper value to evaluate. So this program rule variable is defined by the person who's designing the system and they are used in these expressions. So once you create the program rule variable, it is available for any rule you create in the program. So it's shared between, within your program. So you create a program rule variable for your program and then use it in a program rule. And you can also use it in another program rule. So it's common to the program. And in summary, so when you, the program rule variables, they create a unique reference or a pointer to show, to identify where to check the data when you are evaluating the expression to 
trigger the program rule action. So you will understand this more when you when we create program rules. So keep in mind the variables they link to usually the attribute or the data element. For example, let's say you want to do some action in the data entry interface, depending on the sex of that person. Let's say you want to uh, display whether the patient is pregnant, ask, uh, display the data element, whether the patient is pre pregnant only for females. So you have to capture the attribute sex to your expression. So how do you capture this attribute value? You capture it through a program rule variable. So let's uh, go back to the demonstration and see how to create a program rule variable. So I'm going back to my uh, customized instance and I'm in my program rule variable management tab. So let's start by creating the TB program rule, which we saw in action at the beginning, where you hide the site for extra pulmonary TB depending on whether the patient uh, site of TB is pulmonary or extra pulmonary. So first thing you have to do is you have to work out in your mind how your program rule behaves. So this program rule, if you think of it in your mind, it should capture whether the patient's TB site is pulmonary or extra pulmonary. And if it's pulmonary, you have to hide the extra pulmonary site Data, data element, but if it's extra pulmonary, then you should show that uh, EPTB site capturing data element. So that part you have to configure in mind and identify what is the program rule variable here and what is the expression you have to design and what is the action. So let's start with the program rule variable. So in this variable, I think you have already figured it out that you have to capture the site of the TB disease in that patient. So I'm going to create a program rule to capture that. So uh, if I start from the beginning, I go to maintenance app. then go to program tab, then program rule variable. Then I'm going to create one program rule variable using the plus icon. So first thing you have to select is your program. So as I mentioned earlier, these variables are also linked to a program so that you can use it in any program rule within that uh, program. So I'm going to select the TB program which we have here, the TB treatment card. So this is my program. Then I have to give a name for this program rule variable. So this name you have to keep in mind because it is what is later used in your expression. So let's uh, give your program rule variable a name. Let's say TB site uh, I'll add one word called current. I will explain why I have added this later. So I'm naming this as TB site current. So next, 
there is an option to click whether you want to use codes or option sets. So when you are configuring option sets, you have a name and also you have a code. So you can use either of these to be used here. So I will uh, just skip it because I know both the uh, codes and names are similar in this uh, TB site option set. It has pulmonary and extra pulmonary as names and also as codes. So next is source type. So if I click this, I see six options here. So we will uh, go through these options in detail later, but uh, I will just select data element in the current event. So usually you configure these program rules as script logics. So the data element in the current event is what you capture. So we will, uh, you will understand this when we see the other uh, options also later. So at the moment, I'm going to select data element in the current event. So the data element which will capture in the currently open event. So click data element in the current event. And then you get the option to select which data element should be linked to your program rule variable. So I figured this in my mind that it should be linked to the TB site, C TB disease site. So this is the element which captures whether the patient is pulmonary or extra pulmonary. So don't confuse with this TB, EPTB site. The disease site is whether it's pulmonary or extra pulmonary. And EPTB site is if it's extra pulmonary, which site? So I want to check this, whether the patient is a pulmonary or extra pulmonary patient. And depending on that, I have to hide the EPTB site element. So I'm going to select disease site here and I'm going to save this now. So I have my program rule variable here. So my first step is done. So let's go back to the presentation and see what our next step is. So we have created the program rule variable to capture the data element value of TB site. Next, we have to build our expression to evaluate, for the system to evaluate. So when you enter data or change a data value, the expressions we have defined will be evaluated. So each time when the user interface is displayed and each time when a data element is changed, the expression will be evaluated. And the action will be triggered. So most of the actions will be immediate. For example, hiding the data element like in script logic. So most of the actions will take effect immediately. So these ex building expressions are done using the program rule variables which we created. And there are additional things which we can use to build these program rule variables like operators, there are static values, functions, which we will see. So there are program rules, there are operators. So uh, these are also, if you want details, we can see in the uh, user manuals, I will show you later. So what do you have to create is this program rule expression. So these are few examples of expressions. So first one, you can see trained adolescent health staff more than facility staff. So it will assist if there are more staff in trained in the adolescent health, then staff than staff within the entire facility. So likewise, you build, can build your own expression. The second one, vaccine doses are equal or more than zero. 
and vaccine doses are equal or less than four. So it, if you build your expression like this, it will assess the number of vaccine doses, whether it's greater than or equal to zero and less than two or equal to four. So another one, sample type equals plasma or sample types equal sputum and sex equals male. So this is, these are three examples which somebody has built as expressions in program rules. So let's think of our expression. What should our expression be? So I'm going back to my uh, maintenance app and I'm going to create my program rule now using the program rule variable which I created. So going to program rule and uh, going to click a new program rule. So first step, you have to enter program rule details. First thing you have to select the program. So my program is TB program, TB treatment card. Then uh, there is an option whether to trigger rule only for a certain program stage. If your use case needs that you can uh, use it, but I'm not going to use this at the moment. Then you have to give a name for your program rule. So uh, my program rule, I can give some name, let's say uh, uh, EPT display, EPT display, uh, EPTB site. or maybe shoot the other way to make it more clear. Let's say, uh, EPT, the height or pulmonary. You can give any name you want. And uh, then you can give a description of what this program rule does. So this one is important because if somebody later looks at the system, he or she will understand what this program rule does. So I will type a description of this, what my program is, program rule is doing. So it will hide EPTB uh, site when the disease Site is pulmonary. So I can stop at here, or I, if I think more of my rule, I can add another part here. So this EPTB site should be hidden when the site is pulmonary, or if there is if the site is not defined yet, also you can hide it. We will show you, I'll show you how this happens, but at the moment I will name it as uh, the site is pulmonary or blank, let's say, right. Then uh, you can define a priority so that uh, yeah. you give an order of the program rules to for the system to evaluate. So if you give priority one, then it will be evaluated first. I'm not going to give a priority here, priority order here. Then, uh, Next one is entering the program rule expression, which we discussed now. So I'm going to program rule expression. So here we have to give the expression for the system to validate. So we can build this expression using different, different components. On the left, you can see on the, sorry, on the right, you can see there are three options. One is built-in variables. So these variables are built-in, so you can use them. So there is good documentation on this in the user guide. We will see that later. So there's current date, event date, due date. So you can use any of these built-in variables for your program rule expression. Then 
there is another group called variables. So this is where you get the program rule variables you have created. So you can see the TB side current, the program rule variable which I created is displayed here. Then there are a few functions. So built-in functions, again, you can read more about this in the documentation. So we will uh, go through a few of these later. So you can use these functions also. You can see we have the days between, weeks between, then uh, count functions, hash value functions. So a lot of useful functions are here. So I'm, and uh, apart from this, you have the normal operators, the mathematical operators here. You have the plus, minus, multiplication, division, those um, percentages, less than, greater than uh, marks, then equals, not equals, and the three logical expressions, not and or. So you can use any of these uh, in your expression. So now I'm going to build my expression. So my expression should evaluate whether the site of disease is pulmonary or blank. So if it's pulmonary or if it's blank, then system should trigger the action of hiding the EPTP site data element. So I'm going to build my expression now. So I have already made a program rule variable to capture the patient's TB site. So I'm going to click this and bring it into my condition. So you can see my expression TB site current. So it has uh, captured here. And uh, then first condition is I'm checking whether it's pulmonary. So I have to, I will put equals, then pulmonary. Right. So you have to be careful of your spelling because it will evaluate the name. And if you are using the name, the name spelling should be correct. And if you are using the option set code, the code should be correct. So if it's, uh, you have to also put this in uh, single quotes. There is some uh, issue, maybe internet issue, so it's not the expression, uh, checking the expression, so I will move forward. So one uh, component I have built in my expression, and there is another component. So I have to check whether it is empty also. So even if the uh, patient's TB site is empty, still I want to hide the EPTB site. So my uh, expression, I am putting the logical operator or then TB site current, then it, if it's equal to empty. So two goals. So this is how you define empty. So let's uh, save this for the moment. So I'm opening it again. So I have uh, entered the program rule details, selected the program, gave a name and gave a description and created my program rule expression. So usually uh, this on the bottom of the expression, it should display uh, the expression in uh, simple terms after evaluating. Uh, it's not showing, uh, not sure whether it's an issue with the instance. So let's move forward. So I have created uh, the program rule expression. So it's clear now whether TB site 
of TB is pulmonary or site of TB is blank. So one can argue this in the other way also, if using the not, not uh, operator. So you can say if a site is not extrapulmonary, you can hide it also. So that way also one can build it, but uh, rather than using negations, uh, we prefer to use these types of expressions. So both will evaluate to the same expression, right? So I have done two steps. So my third step is defining the program rule action. I'll go back to my uh, presentation. So third step is program rules actions. So once the program rule expression is evaluated, then it triggers the action. So if the uh, expression is evaluated to be true, then the actions attached to the rule is uh, initiated. So the, each program rule should have one or more actions attached to it. And uh, these are behaviors that are triggered in the user interface when the expression is true. So if the expression is evaluated to true, the actions are triggered. So actions will be applied at once if the expression is true and it will also revert if it's false again. So if it's no, no longer true, the action will be reversed. So there are several types of actions which we will see. So in summary, you create program rule, you enter the details, then the expression, then the action. So let's see how to uh, create, configure the action component. Going back to my program rule. So the last component is defining the program rule action. So go back. So EPTB height pulmonary. So this is the expression. And then define the program rule action, the third component. So here, we don't have actions configured at the moment. So I'm going to add one action here. So if you click this, you can see a list of actions which can be used in our program rule rules. So one is assign value, display key pair. So a lot of things uh, which we will discuss later. So at the moment, uh, the action I want is to hide the EPTB field. So there's the option to hide field. Uh, if I click this, it will ask which data element to hide. Simple. So I'm going to select EPTB site. It will also ask there are options to hide the track identity attribute if you want, or as a, and also there is a place to customize your message. You I have shown you the message which appeared when the program rule action took place. So you can give a customized action also. So I'm not going to customize that at the moment. I'm going to click hide field and hide EPTP. So I'm going to commit this. So I'm going to save this now. So my program rule is saved. So if I go back, I have the details, selecting the program, then name, uh, description, then the expression, which I give a, gave as a, if TB site equals pulmonary or TB site equals none, then define action hide field. Let's see whether this uh, program rule is working. So to select, to check whether the program is rule is working, uh, one thing you have to do is to clear the cache. So always remember to clear cache before testing any changes in your program rule. So I've cleared my cache. I'm going to track a capture.
So I will uh, load my DB program, DB treatment card. So I will uh, register a patient person there. So I entered the tact entity dashboard and I can, if I go to the DBTC site, uh, I cannot see the EPTB site at the moment. So let's try extra pulmonary. So when I click extra pulmonary, I can see the EPTB site now. So if I click pulmonary again, it is disappearing. So my program rule is working. So let's put a EPTB site also and see, let's say it's plural, plural uh, EPTB, but uh, then change it to pulmonary. So my message is coming, DB site was blanked out and hidden by your last action. So that program rule which we created uh, worked fine. So I'll go through the presentation, back to the presentation again. So this is a summary of what we did. We created the, first we created the program rule. When creating the program rule, so first we created the program rule uh, variable. Then in the, at the steps in program rule creation, we entered the details for the program rule and uh, the expression and the action. So in summary, the steps for creating a program rule. So first thing you have to conceptualize in your mind what this program rule should do. So the logic you have to decide before creating. So keep it in your mind maybe you can put it down, draw it. And uh, so the important things you have to think of is what data element or attribute should I capture and evaluate? And then how should I evaluate? And after evaluating, what is the action that should do? So create the program rule variable to capture that data element or attributes, actually to point to that data and, uh, element or attribute. So then create the program rule. So first thing, select the program, then give a name, give a good description. And if there is a priority, you can assign it. And then uh, enter the program rule expression using the program rule variables and uh, functions, the mathematical operators. So there are different, different things which you can uh, use to create expression. And then finally create the program rule action uh, which you want. And most importantly, clear the cache before testing. So uh, what I will do is I'll give you 10 minutes to create the EPTB uh, hiding program rule in your TB, TB treatment program. And uh, you can ask if there are any questions in the Slack if you come across creating this EPTB uh, program rule. So you can also refer to the learner guide and go step by step because uh, when, once you create your first successful uh, program rule, then uh, the next steps I see so that uh, it's only defining your logic and creating it. So we'll have a 10 minute break. It's not actually a break, so you can practice the first program rule, creating the first program rule, and uh, we'll come back in 10 minutes. Thank you.
not we should give a warning not an error a warning so that uh, that person who is entering the data will think whether this is a mistake and if it's a real mistake he or she will correct the mistake so most uh, probably we we think that the weight should be falling into this stage but there could be extremes of people more than 140 kilos so that's why we are giving a warning not an error so i'm going to maintenance app so just a refresher of uh, what are the steps so first you create the program rule variable to capture the data value to point the uh, data value to weight then you use that uh, program rule variable in our expression and there you give the range 140 and 5 and build our expression and then assign the action that is giving a warning i'm going to program here and uh, program rule variable so already a lot of program rule variables have been created so i will create a program rule variable for the db treatment card weight data element to show and show a warning first step creating a program rule variable so my program rule variable will be assigned to db treatment card program so i have to give a name so uh, since there are many variables already created i have give a prefix of dhis to dhis and uh, then write weight hope nobody else has used dhis as a prefix All right so i'm not i don't have an option set for the weight so no need to tick that anyways so source type so it should be data element in the current event so when you are entering data you are opening that event and the warning should be in the current event so i'm giving i'm selecting data element in the current event and my data element would be weight in kilograms so now i have the pointer the program rule variable pointing to the weight of the person so i'm going to save it then next i'm going to program rule so i'm going to create a program rule to give a warning for weight start from the beginning so my program db treatment card and i have to give a name so i'll give a name again i'll put a prefix chi so that we can identify it later if we want and uh, let's say uh, my program rule as uh, weight weight out of inch and description I give. I have to give a good description. Display warning if it is out of range. We can put our range by two one forty maybe. Right. Then we are building our program rule expression. So we have to use the pointer which we created for weight. So it should be in the variable. So I have to build my expression. So now I am thinking in my mind how to build my expression. So in the expression there will be many parts. One is it should be. Uh, if it is less than or equal to 5 i am giving a warning or if it's more than or equal to 140 i am giving a warning but 
there should be another condition. So if the weight data value is empty, then I should not be giving a warning because it's still not filled. So I'm adding another part to the condition. So my data, the weight, there should be a value. So now I'm again rephrasing my expression. So if the data uh, weight has a value and if it's less than or equal to five or more than or equal to 140. So that I think will be a good expression for me. So how do I get this? Check whether this variable has a value. For that, we have a list of functions here. And if you go down, one of the functions is has value. So if I click this and it says has value and here you have to give the source field. So my source field is my variable. So I'm going to delete this source field and replace it with my program rule variable, which is a DHIS weight. So now this uh, checking part is working back now. So I can see that I have a valid expression now and it is weight in kilograms. So it checks whether this uh, weight data element has a value. And next I'm building my other components of the expression. So I have two other components. One is if, whether it's equal or less than to five and whether it's greater or equal to 140. So I'm getting back my uh, pointer. So before that, I have to use the logical expression. So if on this side, if, has, if it has a value and on this side, it compares with the value. So these both should be true for my expression to be true. So what my logical uh, expression should be is and. So my, uh, now the weight whether check, checks whether it uh, weight has a value and whether that value is less than or equal to five. And there's another component, it should be less than or equal to five or it should be more than or equal to five. So I'm putting that part also, weight more than or equal to 140. So I have a correct equation now, but is it actually correct? So will this evaluate to what I really want? It says D2 has value, whether it has a value and whether it's less than five and sorry, it's then again, it's or it's uh, less than, uh, sorry, more than 140. But what I want is to evaluate these two together, not in this order. So I have to be careful and use the brackets here. So it should evaluate whether this or this against this. So whether the weight is less than or equal to five or more than or equal to 114, and uh, this has a value. So if it has a value and this part. So I think using the bracket here, it's clear for you. Otherwise, if we evaluate it in, an, in this order without the bracket, then first part will be related, then and this part will be related, or then this will take hold of this side as one argument and it will evaluate or against this one. So the argument we want will not be what really we have we are expecting. So now we have a valid argument. So what you have to keep in mind is putting the brackets in the correct places. 
Right, so next, now I have the program rule expression. Then I'm going to define my program rule action. So my action is I need to display a warning. So remember there are two things. One is display, giving an error, one is giving an warning. So if you give an error, that person has to correct it. But if you give a warning, that person can ignore it. So still, the person will think what I have entered, the weight I have entered is right and proceed. So I'm going to put the action. So I'm going through the list. There is error on complete, which is not what I want. I is there schedule and show error. This is also not what I want. I want to show a warning, not an error. So I'm going to select show warning. So difference, as I mentioned, if you put show error, it should be corrected. The value should be corrected. But if you if it's a warning, you can ignore it. So show warning. When I click it, it will display another box. Then you can select data element to display warning next to. So this will define where the warning is displayed. So the warning, it's better if you display it to the it next to the data element where you think there could be an error so that the data entry person, it's easy for him or her to correct it. So I want to display this warning next to my weight data element. Right. Then uh, if you want it to display against an attribute, this is the option, then you can build your uh, error, sorry, warning message. So you can put a static text or you can again put a dynamic te text using the variables uh, and functions. But I will just put a static text saying that weight is out of range. You can define whatever uh, the message you want. You can just say is uh, likely, let's say likely to be out of range. It's likely to be out of range. So it could be out of range, it could, it could be correct. So I'm going to commit it. So now I have configured my program rule. I've entered the details and the expression and the action. I'm going to save it. So my program rule is saved correctly. Next step, you can test it if you want. Then remember to clear the cache because data entry interfaces has a lot of cache stored in the browser. I will go to tracker capture. Then uh, going to my program, DB treatment card. So I can use uh, the same entity which I registered earlier. So if you go down, you have the weight here. So if you enter a weight here, less than five, or if less than or equal, it will say weight is likely to be out of range. So if I say 50, it will accept the weight. So if I make this 150, it will again display the warning. So my program rule is working as I expected. So that's the second program rule we have created. So you can create uh, this one also in practice. And uh, what we'll uh, do is after the break, we'll create one in the ANC program and a couple more in the TB program so that uh, you will be familiar. You'll get more 
experience in creating program rules. So uh, I think uh, Nick wanted to discuss something about the exam. Uh, Nick, you can take over. Uh, 